हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू द बायोलॉजी क्लास सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी फिनिश द चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेल्व डेट इज बायो टेक्नोलॉजी एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन सो टुडे लेट्स हैव अ रीकैप ऑफ दिस होल चैप्टर सो दैट वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी हैव गॉन थ्रू द होल थिंग एंड देर आर सम डाउट्स ऑलवेज विद यू सो दिस वीडियो विल बी रिगार्डिंग द कम्प्लीट टॉपिक फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग ऑफ दिस चैप्टर टिल द एंड सो वी लर्न इन दिस चैप्टर दैट बायो टेक्नोलॉजी हैज इमेंसली हेल्प अस इन द फील्ड ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एज वेल एज इन द फील्ड ऑफ द मेडिकल साइंस बेसिकली we learned that agriculture in, in agriculture we can increase the input with the help of either using the high yielding varieties of plants that means whenever we use these high yielding varieties we have to even use the agrochemicals that means the chemical pesticides as well as the chemical herb as well as the chemical fertilizers we have already learned in the 10th chapter that when we use these chemicals we are Uh, spoiling the ecosystem we are uh, changing the chemistry of the soil and even targeting the non target uh, even killing the non target type of insects as well as the other organism so that's why these chemicals may enter into the food chain and can even cause problem to the health of human also that's why uh, agrochemical based type of uh, farming is not able to provide us the solution so the other way of increasing the uh, input output of the agriculture is to use the organic farming we know in organic farming no chemicals are used but there is a limit for how much increase in the output can be made with the help of organic farming that's why the only option left with us is the most latest one that is called as genetically modified crops uh, these crops are those in which the foreign genes have been introduced and through genetic engineering this introduction takes place and that's why these are called as the gm crops or genetically modified crops we have learned in the last class uh, in the classes that these gm crops are able to provide us better uh, facilities because when we make a genetically modified crop we may we can easily make these crops tolerant to the abiotic stress like cold drought salt as well as heat we uh, we can even reduce our dependence on the chemical pesticides because when we make gm crops we can make them pest resistant crops or you can say bio controlled type of crops and we also uh, save the loss which are done because of the post harvest uh, post harvest uh, techniques or transfer etc so we can reduce the post harvest loss if we use genetically modified crop uh, for this we learned the example of the flavor sar uh, sarv uh, tomato variety we also learned that it is possible to increase the efficiency of mineral usage by the crop plant so this help us uh, this help us to prevent early exhaustion of fertility of the soil and the fifth point we learned was that when we use uh, these genetically modified crops we can make them into bio fortified crops so they will become more uh, efficient in meeting our daily requirement of minerals as well as nutrients so for example we learned was from the ncrt the vitamin a or you can say beta carotene enriched uh, rice which is called as the golden rice is an example of bio fortified crop these are the benefits of use of the genetically modified crops we learned in the classes that production of transgenic plants includes two method either we can use the gene gun which is a direct method or vectorless method the other method possible is with the use of the vectors vector aided method which includes either the disarmed pathogen vector so we can use the agrobacterium tumefaciens basically for this so when the agrobacterium is used its type plasmid is modified so that it attacks the organism but does not but it attacks the plant cell but does not uh, cause it to develop tumorous growth so in this way the uh, this arm pathogen can be made to ligate in its plasmid with the gene of interest and then the plant will this plant cell will receive this gene of interest and become a transgenic plant cell and through tissue culture this plant cell can be developed into plantlets and then the plant will express the new phenotype we learned in the class that the, the best example of this is the bt cotton uh, bt stands for bacillus thuringiensis we learned that there is this is a soil bacterium which produces a protein or cry protein which in the inactive form is called as protoxin it's in crystalline form and does not create any harm but once it enters into the intestine of the insect or the insect larvae then in the alkaline medium in the gut it becomes solubilized and activated to become the toxin it binds to the surface of the mid gut of the epithelium and causes the development of pores in the epithelium cell swelling followed by cell lysis and finally the death of the insect or the larvae of the insect takes place 
we also learned that the choice of bt depends upon the uh, the crop we are talking about and the target pest we are talking about for example we learned that cry first ac and cry second ab both are able to uh, uh, to uh, to make cotton plant uh, to, uh, the uh, resistant towards the ball worm and in the same manner cry first ab is able to make corn plant resistant against the stem borer Uh, the ball worm attacks the cotton borer attacks the corn so if these uh, my, if these plants are made uh, transgenic with these specific genes they are able to repel these uh, my, these uh, pests so in this way cry gene can be taken and can be introduced into the plant cell and this is how bt cotton bt tomato bt brinjal many many such plants have been created we learned that there are certain classes or uh, groups of the of the insects which are harmful for our crops for example lepidopterans include tobacco budworm army worm coelopterans include beetles dipterans includes the flies as well as the insects